Well, what's going on, everybody? This is Dylan Talks Tone. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the like button, all the stuff. So I'm kind of on this streak of kind of talking about recording stuff. So today we're going to talk Mac versus PC. Uh, 2019, should you go Mac? Should you go PC? You're trying to put together a home studio. Uh, what should you buy? You just want to get started and you hear all kinds of stuff. I'm going to give you some personal experience um, and I'm going to share with you what I know about how to make this decision, if that makes sense. So before everybody gets all freaked out and wants to fight about this in the comments, and you're welcome to do so, uh, but be nice. Uh, I want to tell you a little story. This is my 2015 MacBook Pro. Before this, I had another MacBook Pro. 2013? Before that, I had uh, the old black MacBook or unibody, whatever they called it. Anyway, I've been a Mac person for probably since 2005, 2008. So I'm a diehard Mac person, or at least I was. I also used iPhones since 2008 or 9 or whenever they came out. I actually started one of the first smartphone repair companies in the United States when they first started. Uh, I was like really heavily invested in smartphone knowledge and understanding it. You would have never caught me on an Android anything to save my life until about three months ago. Um, and I made the switch and I'm now using a Galaxy phone. So uh, Galaxy, what is this thing? S10, whatever. I wouldn't go back. Uh, I would not, as technology stands right now in the middle of 2019, I would not go back to Apple. So we're going to discuss not why I switched, but we're going to talk about what decisions you should make if you're trying to produce audio and video in 2019, or you're trying to get started and you want to know what to buy. So a lot of people, what they're going to do is they're just going to go look at a spec sheet uh, at Best Buy, or they're going to just say, well, you're a creative person, so you need to eat at Starbucks a lot and use a MacBook Pro because it's for creatives. And then there's other people that will tell you, don't do that because you're overpaying, blah, 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 blah. Well, I was turned on to a completely different method of choosing the correct hardware a few months ago uh, when I was watching some videos on YouTube and it was uh, done by a guy that builds computers for a living. I'm not a computer nerd. Like, I, well, I wasn't. I kind of am now. I'm kind of learning to be. He gave me the perspective a little bit different. Instead of just going and buying the gnarliest computer you can afford or assuming that one brand is going to work for something versus the other, it's more important to look at the software that you're using and understand how the software uses the computer what parts of the software uh, use what parts of the computer and how that interacts. So what is your end goal? Is your end goal to record music? Well then in that case, uh, having a decent processor speed and some multiple cores, you know, four cores for instance, uh, to work with so that it can run in parallel and spread that load across, you know, as you start to get multiple tracks and then a decent amount of RAM. Now, a lot of people will go crazy with these numbers, but actually uh, your normal DAWs, your digital audio workstations, most of them will do just fine with eight gigs of RAM. 16 would probably make it easier. And the thing is, is then you can run uh, lower buffer speeds. You don't have as much latency. It's not going to click and pop when you're trying to listen with no latency or, or delay. If, you've ever, if you're new to this, uh, that is basically the time it takes for the talking into the microphone to go into the computer, do all the processing, and then come to your headphones. The time it takes is called latency. So the more you have, you might actually like, I might have headphones on and I'll be talking and I'll hear like an echo or it'll be delayed delayed from the time I'm saying it to the time I'm hearing it, that's called latency. And a lot of times that has to do with uh, the computer speed and how things are set up. So having the highest clock rate possible is cool. To have quad cores is definitely cool and definitely have, in my opinion, 16 gigs of RAM is probably going to do it. Now, why did I switch from my MacBook Pro to that gnarly thing over there with so that is a intel coffee lake 8700k 
processor with a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 8 gig Founders Edition video card with a super gnarly motherboard with 32 gigs of RAM with a solid state hard drive with a high RPM storage drive. I mean, I kind of went all out on that thing. The reason is, is because I use it for editing all of these videos. Videos have a completely different need, especially when I'm shooting on a camera like the a6500 that I'm talking to you on right now, where it's a 6K camera that downscales to 4K and then spits it out. It's just a lot of data to deal with. And on this MacBook Pro, I, it wouldn't work. It just would not work. It would start stuttering. It would uh, break up on me. It would crash. It was taking me like all day to edit a video that should have taken me like 45 minutes to edit you know because i was rebooting all the time it's just absolutely driving me insane so we switched to adobe premiere and we built this computer but when i did that a couple of things i wanted to make sure of first one i wanted to make sure that the software used the computer in a certain way so building that computer for particularly for editing was a thing that was really really important to me that being said in order to spec out a macbook pro to do what i wanted it to do number one wasn't possible you cannot get that much spec in a macbook pro number one number two in order to get it in an imac or a mac pro would have run me about 5500 to 6500 dollars depending on how i did it and the how i got there okay and the MacBook Pro that I wanted to spec out, I think it was close to $5,000 or whatever. It was over four. Anyway, it just didn't seem reasonable to me at that point. And understanding that I could upgrade this thing in the future, that I could build a platform that I could use, we went ahead and switched to video, uh, our video stuff, all to a PC and to Adobe Premiere. It actually means that I had to learn a new software. I guess I knew it, but... I didn't use it a lot, so uh, to get more comfortable with it is probably more accurate. Now that being said, I used my old MacBook Pro for all of, well, for a lot of my audio stuff. And so in the next couple of weeks, we'll show you a couple of ways that we keep an audio setup portable that we can take with us and do podcasts wherever we go and to be able to you know just record any kind of audio and lay the audio tracks over the video later, all that kind of stuff. So I do use my MacBook Pro a lot. So what does this mean for you if you are trying to put together a studio for the first time? First of all, if you already have a computer, you probably don't need to buy one. Unless it's like six years old, in order to do some basic tracks in your living room or in your studio at home, putting a couple guitar tracks down, even you know eight or nine drum tracks and a couple of guitar tracks, the computer that you have already is probably good enough. If you don't have one or you want to upgrade, don't go crazy. Look at this thing right here. It's under like 600 bucks and it would do everything you needed it to do for most DAWs and be able to record everything and be able to be plenty fast to get what you need to get done and run those lower latencies and be able to have no problem at all. According to most of the specs that I looked at on most of the DAWs that are out there, most common ones that people are using. So don't go crazy. Just use the computer that you have or buy something relatively capable for a reasonable amount of money. Make sure that you get a good interface that has good preamps and that works great. And so we actually are going to be switching to Focusrite. So if you're a beginner, these very basic focus rights are fantastic. I think the 2i2 is, is the key. I think that's the one that I would use if I was starting all over again and didn't have any stuff at all. I'm actually gonna buy a different one for some specific reasons having to do with the Kemper that we'll get into in some videos uh, coming up. But keep it simple and just split and just hit record. As we get some of this new gear in, because I'm switching over to Focusrite, we'll set it up, we'll do some demos, we'll actually be able to, I'll be able to show you kind of my workflow about how I put a video together, how I capture the audio, and how we put this all together. But if you're trying to capture audio for the first time, use the computer you already have. We'll put a link to 
a decent computer for about 500 bucks in the description below and we'll put a couple of links to some interfaces that I personally have used and will use again uh, in the links below. Keep it simple. The Mac versus PC thing, it's more of a tribal thing than it is any kind of numbers or practical anything. It's more of a, ugh, whatever, I don't care about it. I have both, I use both, I love both. It's okay to like both. It's like these people that are like Kemper versus Tube Amp or whatever. You can like both. It's just tools to get a job done. And understanding how those tools work with the software to get the end result that you want is probably more important than what the badge on it is or what kind it is. Those are my thoughts. I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and go through some of your thoughts, some comments and stuff that we've seen come in over the videos over the last couple uh, weeks. And we'll give you some shout outs and we'll do some FAQs real quick. All right, so questions and comments. Uh, we had some pretty interesting ones. Um, first of all, this whole Gibson thing has blown us up quite a bit. For the most part, everybody's been really cool and you know, super awesome in the comments and not being angry. Uh, but you know, if if you start cussing and stuff, you're out. I'm just you know, we don't need that stuff around here. So most everybody's been pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. I have to start with one that's kind of funny. Joe Bilboa on that, our last live thing, which has been really fun. Everybody's been digging them. I really appreciate you guys watching them. Oh my God, I couldn't even get through this video 18 minutes in and there's already six ads. Plus I felt like I was listening to my cousin's son tell me about his day at school. I've never posted a negative comment on a video before, but this was worth it. I came here because it was on my recommend list and I want to learn something about the lawsuit. I learned nothing except stay away from YouTubers who only want to maximize the monetization of their videos rather than supply good content. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for watching. First of all, I do appreciate it. Uh, second of all, I actually don't control that. That's like that. I don't have anything to do with that. Third of all, I probably made like 0.05 cents off of you watching my video. So I didn't really make any money anyway, uh, but I do appreciate you taking the time. Um, and if you're curious about other good content, we have like 450 videos on this channel. So uh, if you're new here, you know, I do appreciate you watching. Um, just look around a little bit. I think you'll dig it. All right, let's see the next person, Jeremy Dink, you. I don't know how to say your name, dude. Sorry. Uh, yeah, another place to spend my valuable time. The life of a guitar nerd. So many things to do, but hey, it's guitar and tones. I can't help myself. It's like being addicted to a drug. Looking forward to the content. Now, this is on last week's video about recording stuff. I will tell you that there's been a lot of positive input and outreach and messages about this whole recording thing, like what we're talking about in this video that we're just finishing up. The more questions you have about this stuff, the more content I will create we've bought new equipment we're doing different stuff we're making it to where we can share how to record this stuff and le learn stuff i don't know along the way and share it with you uh teach you the stuff i do know but basically putting all this guitar nerdery into application that we use every day so i'm just saying i really appreciate that that the input on it and we're going to continue to make this content um in addition to our other stuff because People are really digging it. On our live video from last Friday about Dean lawsuit with Gibson, Bailey says, it's kind of a bummer that I will never get a Dylan LP Jr., but I totally understand it. He's probably talking about the Dylan, the Dylan Talks Tone, Dylan Custom Guitars, Batfish model. Um, that is an original shape, believe it or not, and I will build you one. I would love to build you one. So if you want one of our guitars, any of our guitars, let me know and I'd love to build you one. Um, we don't talk about that a whole lot on this channel, but we build about 20 guitars a year, custom guitars for people. I've got a few custom builds going right now. Um, the ones that you see hanging in the background, we've built, those are ours. Um, some of them are using some licensed parts. Some of them are using full custom stuff. Um, we did a video on why and how that all works and how we keep our prices where we do. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, let me know. Uh, but yeah, for sure, get in touch with me. We'd love to do that. Um, somebody asked, I never wanted 2010 asked, how long does this polish job last? So he's talking about the fret polishing kits. Um, 
I use the Music Nomad polish stuff and it works pretty well, but it doesn't seem to last very long at all. Um, by the way, I have a huge shipment of that stuff showing up this afternoon. We were on back order for a couple of weeks on it. It is getting caught up. Those of you that are waiting for it, they're come, I'm going to ship that stuff out this afternoon. Um, so we've got tons of it in. If you want a fretboard polishing kit, please let me know. Um, you can order it on the website at Dylan Talks Tone. There's a link in the comments. Uh, so to answer this guy's question, um, it depends on the quality of the frets. Um, the stuff we use actually has a sealant built into it to keep it kind of protected from corrosion. But cheap frets are going to need it more often because they corrode faster. Um, and also it has a lot to do with your skin. So I can't actually give you a direct um, answer to this. I personally, lasts a long time for me, but my hands are real easy on nickel. And so it's, it, it, it doesn't eat it up. Uh, now I have other friends that they can't get through a whole gig before a set of strings and their frets are all gooey. So, you know, because their, their sweat eats it up. So that's that. My name is Dylan. This is Dylan Talks Tone. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, the like button, like button, please like button, subscribe and share this stuff. Uh, please share this stuff because this is, this stuff is fun, man. And I love doing it. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you next time.